correct and they are within our brand standards for the signage as well. I believe. Oh, and then certainly last but not least, we do have a table that identifies all of our different sign types that we'll be utilizing throughout the building and just quick images. So we will ensure that those are also updated based off of our discussions today. And note that we're just using placeholder content in those sign types. So don't worry about the verbiage. This is the type of sign. Just so everyone knows everything that that sets up far and they kept from the public, but we're trying to get our audio up. It's fixed. Like, are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, wonderful. Here on it, it is official. Okay. <laughs> is there anything we need to cover? Go back on. I think we did. I I think this style guide is is a good information that we feel that we'll take a look at, and then next month uh, at our meeting, we'll. Sprinkle some holy water on it. How about that? And as truth has been mentioned, there's quite a few updates we want to make for this anyway. So what we're looking at right now is it's going to be interesting. And we had a request from the public if you could both speak up a little bit. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. That is the style guide. Okay. Any questions about that at all? And I am I easier to hear now? Nope. All right. Is there anything specific that you had in mind uh, coming in this month that you want to make sure that our, our subcommittee addressed in the style guide or is it pretty straightforward? There, there, are, there are some things, but a lot of them are, are addressed as we look at the, the signs that are out there, whether the style of the sign is working for you or not, whether the scale is appropriate. And the only way to tell that is to look at the things that the physical things that we have in this space and throughout the building. Um, the other things are the, are the naming conventions, making sure that we're all on board calling the things that we're calling them. Those are appropriate. And those are listed in the style gate, but they'll be updated based on conversations today. But that's part of the next thing that we're going to talk about in this meeting, some names. Thank you. Thank you. So, Nigel, with that, did oh. The name discussion, did you want to maybe do that right now so we know what to be thinking of or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's dive in. Ready, ready? All right. Um, we have the new interactive visitor center, which is which shares this wall over here. <clears throat> um, and uh, up until now, we've just been calling it the visitor center. And for those that haven't been involved, the focus of the visitor center is to give people a dynamic understanding of what Wyoming state government is and how they can participate, primarily focused on students um, from fourth, fifth grade up until 12th grade. So there will be a combination of technology and analog hands-on and graphic panels that tell stories and explain different processes within the government, uh, dividing it into sections that focus on legislative, um, <coughs> executive, um, and uh, judicial, but uh, not as high, a deep a dive on judicial, since they do such a wonderful job focusing on that in the Judicial Learning Center. Um, that'll be the focus of that room. So what do we call it? We spent a little time uh, back in our office trying to think of different terminology, and we kept coming back to it's, it's like a combination of three things. It's who we focused on, who's the audience, what is the experience we're expecting it, and how do we define the space? Where is it? So you could take a combination of any of these words, and these are the words that we sort of brainstormed and came up with, and then combine them into any sorts of combinations. Maybe you choose two of them or all three of them. So these are some of the ones that we garnered from that list. I'll just read them out for those that can't see them that are on Zoom. Uh, People's Empowerment Hub, Empowerment Hub. Citizens Leadership Center, Citizen Center, Civic Discovery Lab, Discovery Lab, Wyoming Empowerment Hall, Wyoming Discovery Room, Wyoming, what, Wyoming Learning Hub, Civic Learning, Learning Lab, and Civic Education Chamber. So let me go back to the to the list and let's have a discussion. Does any is any or is it better to look at the the narrow down list we put together? No, I like the full the one. So, so we like to, anything that, I'm sorry. My first comment is the word empowerment to me is 
inappropriate. We're not trying to empower anybody. We're trying to educate and basically give them a comfort zone. Of, but it's, you know, that, it's, to me, that's just the wrong word. So, okay. And I would maybe strike democracy from the first words. Okay. I would argue we do want to empower people, but not that, that I agree that this is not the right thing. Let me empower you. <laughs> <laughs> So from my description, we talked about a place where it would be active, it would be a participatory active sort of experience that educates them. So we wanted something that felt like there was energy and activity. Uh, we wanted to focus, um, we didn't necessarily want to focus just on students um, because those are going to be an obvious audience. They'll be actually walked into the room by their tour guides. Um, so we wanted to open it up to a broader experience. So how do we describe that lot larger group? Um, and then finally, um, center, it, it's one room. It feels that, that word, I don't know, feel, maybe it's the right word, but it feels like a little expansive. Um, maybe not. I don't know. I could argue both ways. And you think that Hall and, and Hall is, is not the same. Is, are not the same you're, you're exactly right. Um, this is just me, committee, but I I like the word city. I do too. And, and I like enrichment or engagement. So those are the words that stand out for me because I think it, it's pretty descriptive of what we're trying to do in that room. Um, at the same time, I'm thinking in my head that it's a, it's a welcoming it's for most of our visitors, it will be sort of the jump off point. But I do like civic and enrichment probably. Then. I like civic because it doesn't nar narrow it down to just kids and it's accurate. Um, I, I'm from the second list. I like, I like enrichment. I really like discovery. Okay. I definitely don't like room. That's very... Yeah, <laughs> I like the cadence of Civic Discovery Center, even though I just spent a little time talking about how center is problematic. <laughs> but I like that just the 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 C's. So my question is, what's the rush to name? And in some ways, you almost need to see it first. Um, it's it's going to be in in, in uh, is it going to be in any wayfinding? Yes. Yeah, 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 it's going to be a It's going to exist on all the signage when we're drafting to get here. Where now it says visitor center. Anytime it has that on a directory, that would be switched out. So just to be clear, we are dropping visitor center completely by doing this. This would be a replacement of that. Yeah. And the idea behind that is that visitor center sort of implies the docent concept where you'd go to start your visit versus this is really more of a it's kind of an extension of this student learning center and it's an interactive experience yeah. so knowing that we're going to put it on signs some of those middle words get pretty long yeah folks there you go. Former journalists in the room. I'm looking across the room at them. Gary, um, what do you think about? Um, I I like the the civic part because it's very understanding of what it is <laughs> that it's you're coming to get a it's a civic we're learning the civic process. Um, I like either the discovery or exploration because, or engagement, anything that implies it's hands-on because that's really what we work to do is to make it interactive. And the other words I don't think are, I think academy is a little off-putting. <laughs> Me too, yeah. <laughs> like it's, yeah. The other thing, recognizing if we're going to change the name and want it to be called this, it can't be 400 syllables. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> civic learning lab. Civic, you know, if we want people to say it and it's called the 
community engagement chamber. Yeah. We're all just going to continue to call it the visitor center. <laughs> I love that. Right? I'm with the co-chair You are spot on, yes. Ma Madam Chairman, Mr. Co Chairman, I'm sorry, I forgot who's chairing. So my yes, bad, my does. bad on that. But um, my colleague and I from the Department of Ed, we, we kind of were leaning towards civic engagement for the first two words. And I don't know if we settled on a third one, but I like the idea of a short word. He says the middle word is kind of long, but, um, but that was where we were leaning. Really like the civic part. I don't know if we're quite as attached to the engagement, but it, it does fall into the somewhat empowering, somewhat, uh, you know, uh, that, that you're participatory. In that yeah, yeah. So we all like civic? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Everybody likes civic? Mm -hmm. And no. <laughs> Let's one <laughs> so, Madam Chair, on that third word, I would just say that um, having come from education, uh, the word hall, just about any campus in a in America, you, you go around education and you go into a hall and not group. Mm -hmm. um, that that's only a room next to us, but it could be an engagement hall. Could be more broad, like civic experience. So we don't like academy, we don't like room because it's boring, and chamber sounds scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like lab too. I like I, yeah. You don't like lab? It, it feels like you describe what's going on in there. Yeah, maybe. Well, in lab in Texas, what you were saying, lab means hand to hand on. Yeah. Maybe. I kind of like Civic Discovery Lab. But... I like Civic Discovery Lab. I like Civic Learning Lab. I also would throw out Civic Action Lab. I think it's short. It's minimizing our syllables from all three lists. <laughs> <laughs> and Madam, these lists are by any means exhaustive. But... I'm not a big fan of the word learning because I think it's, you're on a field trip. And even though you, you are learning, learning you don't want to learn that. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And I think it also, from a uh, group travel perspective, it definitely says if this is learning, this is just students. And this yeah. is this room is already the student learning center to kind of be oh, a classroom. Oh, so we already have kind of be a little loud. So, Madam Co Chairman, was that a motion? Civic Discovery Civic Lab. Civic Action Lab. Civic Action Lab. Oh, do we like Action Lab? I mean, that's that's catchy. I don't think that's bad. What? Throw some rocks at that. Kevin's gonna shit. He's Nobody getting his can. rocks out of his pocket. <laughs> Kevin's got a rock. <laughs> no, I mean, lab and hub are definitely kind of the the terms de jour for museums doing these types of spaces. I mean, almost everyone so we're going to be using one of those two for these kind of very high activation spaces geared towards kids. So I think I would lean towards those two in terms of that that where those top two. We have to decide today, or can we? I think it would. It would be would helpful, be helpful to everybody. To everybody. Check it out. Yeah. 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 Representative yeah. Nicholas, do you have any strong feelings, Representative yeah. Sherwood? So we call it Cal for short. Yeah. Versus democracy empowerment chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Cal. Democracy Participation Academy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that makes me want to run the other way. Yeah. That sounds like everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Action versus engagement. And I might have to look to my social studies experts on, you know, we have civic learning, we have civic dispositions, we have civic engagement, we have civic action. If there's something in there, you know, this is trying to help them become um knowledgeable so they can participate in state government is there a 
word that hits that from the standards perspective? Uh, Madam Chair and Mr. Co-Chair, I think engagement is what we want from students. We want them to engage with this, all these ideas. Um, I actually also prefer hub because I feel like this is where they start. And from here, they go out into the building and explore some of the things. That would be my, I like civic engagement hub, but it doesn't have a catchy acronym. Bell or Bell. Well, uh, hub would be. Oh, no, you're right. That would be. Yeah. We are trying to be a little catchy here and keeping in mind if we go back and think about it, her exhibits, the Plinko, the, you know, what, what are we trying to get? This is how you act like action. Like you have to, you have to act to participate in your government. Like you make these. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was going to ask if we need that second word. Does civics? Civic get us there. So could it be the civic lab, the civic hub? Hmm. What about Wyoming Civic? Wyoming Civic Lab. Wyoming, I don't know. I wonder if you want to change it to civics then, if you lost the word that it's modifying, like otherwise civic is modifying the kind of mm -hmm. action or kind of engagement. Or, yeah. I think you do want an action yeah. word in there because frankly civics already has a bit of an image problem as being kind of dull and <laughs> not action oriented um and so i think if you're trying to drive that excitement to the space you want to have something the people may not be looking at the civics part they're going to be looking at the engagement or you know exploration or discovery is kind of the word that's cluing them into that this is someplace fun to be um which is not always communicated well by civics <laughs> So in some ways, it makes more sense just to have two words: action, action lab, or empowerment lab. Yeah. So Kevin's that word engagement you used. Um, going off of your background and experience, but we could, you know, civic engagement could be the first two, and then we could land on the third, um, replacing the word action. Um, I know engagement is what we want, but to students, that sounds yeah. real boring. That sounds a lot like learning to me. And I would say maybe lab kind of already insinuates that it's hands on, hands on, and yeah, experiment. Ex yeah, which are so that could be a little redundant. Maybe. So. I mean, if, like if, if if somebody comes up with something amazing in the next three days and can throw it out, that's what do you, what do you I didn't hear what you said. Civic action lab. Does that make anyone nauseous or really? <laughs> <laughs> so who? Yeah, who? What? Where? Who? <clears throat> that doesn't mean that's. I mean, so it doesn't really qualify for that. I I would rather have action lab than civic action lab. What about citizen action lab? Yeah. You put citizen. That sounds better to me. Unless I like that. Mm -hmm. Then you get rid of civic altogether. We're going to teach you about civics sneakily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of how or AI, it's how. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still cap. It's okay. citizen action lab. I like it. Okay. Does anybody have any? Wendy does. Well, I love it. The only thing I wonder about, and I might look to Marguerite, who, um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman and Madam Chairman, just, uh, you know, sometimes capitals do have places that are more, they're like a capital club, but they're for citizens. So would it be confusing? You walk in and you think you're going to have someone help you with getting, you know, who do I go to to get my uh, help with my bill? I see what you're saying. <laughs> um, yeah. um, there's several states that do that. So it's basically capital club, but you don't have to pay a membership fee and they make copies for you and they help you with bills and that type of thing. So I don't know if that gives that impression versus kind of like a hands-on, and I hate to use the word learning, but. Well, and that's the <laughs> students, but it's just really is to your students. Grown-ups will enjoy it, perhaps. It's really interesting. 
I think the word lab helps you there, though. But I, I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. We have some states have something called the citizen access room. That's kind of a, oh. a and that name is actually a citizen access. It's access to your government, so it's not the same as action, but it sounds a little like that. Time in, Marguerite. Thank you. Um, I'm Marguerite Herman here, a longtime observer of Capitol. Love it. And so thank you for, um, we've just been convincing a little bit. I think there's a danger of getting too pedantic about it. Now, children, here's the thing, Here, you know, and I think that uh, what I see is this being, uh, usually the children will have, school children will have a teacher, an instructor with them. And so I think something that indicates more of, um, I mean, you'd be amazed how many people who live in Cheyenne have never been in the capital, much less anyone else in the state. So I think something that is more, um, you know, understand this. I don't mean this literally. Understanding your government, understanding the building. This is your government. Uh, understand how it works, kind of a thing. And I think I, I'm kind of glad the civics is now in the second tier now because it sounds like a class you take in high school. And so um, just. If you know, try to sound less like a syllabus than, than um, you know, learn about your government. What does this building do? And and I I don't haven't put it in words yet. And I'm glad that you're leaving the vote open perhaps for a couple of days so we can cogitate. And I don't I don't have a vote. Those are just my observances here. And and then especially people from Massachusetts who come in and want to know how do they do it in Wyoming. And so um, again, a little bit less like you have a pointer and a blackboard, but. Um, yeah, and understanding your government kind of thing, how it works, and then hopefully get engaged. But um, you'll find a lot of Wyoming people who have not a clue. You may not be surprised to find how many people in Wyoming have not a clue on how the government is structured, what this building does and stuff. So um, I think I think being a little bit too schoolish, I think is is maybe in price avoid that. Thank you, Madam Chairman and uh, Mr. Chairman. Co so less syllab syllabus, no, no, so no. Well, which I think supports kind of what we've been, you know, we don't want it to say academy. We don't want to say. Although, and, Madam, well, Madam okay. Chairman, just briefly, uh, lab to us uh, sort of indicated experimentation and, and maybe, uh, you know, that's where you try out things and maybe that's not what you want to suggest is like beakers and, you know, and um, Petri dishes. So I think that's exactly what we want to suggest, right? Because we have these games where they get to, you know, input yeah. different things of their choice and see what the end result is. Maybe so. Mm -hmm. So with that, and I and I think what I would imagine probably will end up happening, say, <laughs> you know, when a committee does it, but um, so it's, it's going to be difficult, I think, to land on something today for yeah. DI. That's part of it. And this is only one of about 20 yeah. different names that we've got to come up with on yeah. things. So that's <laughs> so what is our best course forward today um or how should we move how what is the best way to supposed to move forward to make a decision for di we have four of our subcommittees here subcommittee members here so okay, madam chair mr chairman di is it possible for you to go back and brainstorm with fresh fresh eyes more thoughts or you come up with them maybe a list three names for them to make a decision on the August. Absolutely, yeah. And recognizing some of the things that we maybe have, yeah. and yeah. this is really good, and, and and this has been really helpful because we immediately say, ooh, Academy, yeah. Ooh, yeah. you know. Okay. okay, great. Yeah, that's beautiful input. We'll definitely come go back and put our brains together and give you some options. All right, thanks. Um, as you say, there are more. So, the auditorium lobby out here, which has become um, an art gallery, but it's it's more than that. There are other things that can happen in that space. So art gallery may not be the right word. So we felt like that's that's kind of two things there too. It's it's the who, what is this, what's this place for, um, and the what, what is it doing. So we put together a list 
on both sides for that as well. We we came up once with we kind of liked People's Gallery, Capitol Gallery, Citizens Gallery, Wyoming Gallery, Capitol Square Studio. I don't, I'm not sure I like that anymore. Uh, People's Hall. Um, any thoughts? First of all, what what let's let's break this down. What um, what is this space? If it's not an art gallery, what is it, Kevin? What would you call it? I think it's still a gallery, which I probably would. I think if we've talked about it internally a little bit, drop art because the goal would be to have other types of exhibits in there. Um, but I, of all of those kind of what's, I would lean towards galleries still. I think that's the best description for what it actually is. And I don't know that that this needs to be marketed in the same aggressive way that the visitor center I does. I just, I mean, it's the Capitol Gallery. Like it can't be duplicated anywhere else. There's only one in Wyoming. There's only one Capitol. You know. I think at a close second would be people's. I I really like that suggestion, but I'm with the co-chairman. I I think it's the Capitol Gallery. Madam Chair and Co-Chair, I like the Capitol Square Gallery because it's connecting both the Capitol and the Hirschhorn. Like it's not just in the Capitol. It's the space in between. And that actually might draw people to the space because it's like, oh, that's. From a purely wayfinding perspective, that does actually help a little bit. You well, know that we, we have a gallery across the street. We have the, the State Museum, which is a block away. So that kind of confuses us. So we got two, essentially two. Well, I'm square by works, particularly given the new recommendations, you might have a new museum gallery uh -huh. in the current St. Mary's Park. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That would be the Capitol Square. <laughs> How big is this Capitol Square? <laughs> well, it's legislatively defined and it's bigger than just this space. So by, by statute, it would basically be the super block that the Herschler extension and Capitol sit on. And the grounds. I just really like Capitol Gallery. Any, any absent objection? That's what we've kind of been calling it already. So, well, and again, it does not need people who like people who enjoy art. It, it's been a smash hit already. We know that. I think if I could chime in, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Sarah. Yeah, this is Sarah Sheen. Um, my only comment on that is, um, you know, we had a big grand opening for the the galleries, the governor's portrait galleries, and they have they're also in the Capitol. So there's two galleries in the Capitol. Then if you just call it Capitol Gallery, just a thought. Well, isn't the other one called the governor's portrait gallery? Mm -hmm. it, I, I think it definitely is. Yeah. Okay. Move on. Okay. Oh well, have we given DI the direction they need? Uh, right now, I would. My what I'm hearing is the Capitol Gallery. Okay. I think that's pretty that's tough to be. Pretty tough to jump over. And it looks nice in the gold FCOs that you showed us today, which is what my yeah, to. it does. So. It does. And, and it's nice and short. Yeah, it's great. It, some other, uh, some some other more general naming standards. The Herschler uh, One West Conference Center, or is it one? Do you just refer to it? Is it one W? How do you guys refer to it now? What what's the correct name? It's Herschler One West. Herschler One West Conference Center. Yeah. So okay. is, is that the way we want to call it? Horrible. Um, and, yeah, and, and maybe Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairman, I might give a little context for this that came from Oversight. Oversight's original goal was to use that four-room conference space in Herschler One West in conjunction with this these four conference rooms directly below it. I don't know if that helps with trying to brainstorm. You wouldn't always need them, but that the eight of them can be used together for, for different 
types of breakouts. And is there a one East Conference Center? There is not. There had been vision to have what is on Herschel One West throughout stacked throughout Herschel, and it. If not, I would, ran out of time before that. Madam Chairman, I just suggest to call it the Herschel Conference Center then and not try to locate it. Well, it's w. you've got to indicate what building it's in. No, it's true. Well, there are two the way I mean, it shows us where it's located. This, this is way out there, and you may not all know this, but J.E. Stimson's home used to sit over approximately oh, where the Adler <laughs> And when we've talked about doing art in that location that's legislative, it is legislative space, but we're happy to, to lend it out. We have talked about doing Stimson pieces Photographs. over there. I don't know if there's some way to name that after Stimson and do something here. And this is which Stimson? Stimson. Um, so J.E. Stimson, kind of Wyoming's Ansel Adams. I don't know if Kevin oh, should have Yeah. Yeah. He's a, yeah. yeah. A photographer from uh, early 20th century in Wyoming documented a lot of the landscapes and, and communities at that time. The archives has a substantial collection of his work. Like me, I think a lot of people will quickly jump to a different Simpson. Stimson. Stimson is named that. So this is ST. Yes. yes. Stimson. And no P. Changes everything. No P. M P I M S O N. But you have expressed the desire not to name rooms after people either, so that might not be a good idea. So the, for the time being, I'm thinking about where all are we putting this name, and it's mostly going to be on the lower cost, easier to switch out Herschler signage, right? So I think that's right. Yeah. With the way we're using it now, is this okay for now? Because this could be this could be the situation for the next two to three to ten years. So even though you don't even though that name is a bit of a mouthful, that is that is it's not it's not used very much, is it? So I don't know that we. So I think with that in mind, I'm just going to suggest Herschler Conference Center West. I like that. It's, I mean, it's boring and straightforward. It's not as awkward as the one W. That's just. Yeah. Herschler Conference Center West. Okay. Um, we've got two. Uh, elected officials' offices, the ones over in the Capitol building, the ones here in the Herschel building. Um, how do we refer to them? The ones in the Capitol building are frequently currently called the ceremonial office, although other names are used. Is that what we want to call them or the formal office? For the last five years, they've been branded to us as the ceremonial office, and so that's what we've been using. But I can, I, I can ask my colleagues, or we can just keep them ceremonial. I don't have strong feelings about. Is that this. actually indicated anywhere? Does it actually say ceremonial? I mean, no, I, haven't seen it. I don't think so. It's just what we've been saying a lot. So I don't know if formal. I mean, formal office is shorter, and I like that. No, I'm sure. I just say the ceremonial elevates those offices, and and would do away with any confusion. Yeah, it really does. You're not going to find that in the original. <laughs> right. And it and it sort of indicates that they're quite occasional. Yeah. I, I would vote for ceremonial and you, Madam Chairman, if you like it, I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that only goes then on it only goes on some signs, right. it's on some some wayfinding sign so it's not it's not like it's going to be put on the offices so, so why do we have to say formal i think because there's been a rather robust desire to try to solve the problem that everybody shows up in the capitol to see us and we're never there except during session i think that's the 
sort of the rub that has been happening. So calling those out as we're not, there's a reason we're not there. So the, the funny part is that this is back when we created the office space and we were talking about where to put LSO office space and how to use the capital. It was the five electives to, and, the, and the four other than the governor who insisted on having that amount of office space there with, with the direct inference that they were going to actually be there and use it. And none of them are here now. So this is what we have today. And we love our offices and we don't want to give them up, but we're also, and I can attest this, to this, I, you know, constantly, oh, well, I stopped by your office, but you weren't at work <laughs> constantly. And so I think that's the rub that it's like, no, we do work. <laughs> it was actually work. So I, th I think that yeah. reference, Madam Chairman, is necessary just to help the public understand that that's an occasional and normally just during the session kind of office. Um, I think ceremonial does that job better good. than. Party. Okay, ceremonial. It's the first step in then taking that out of space back. <laughs> so in some ways the more, more important question is the next one because on, on those signs now we're talking about putting a line that says uh, their other office is in the Herschel building. What do we call that? Is it the working office, the main office, the business office, or just office? We call it our working offices. Working, working offices? Double yeah, office. plural. And and that's maybe plural. especially true for like the Secretary of State who has two, multiple public locations. I gotcha. So working, working office working. Office. Working. Yeah. And I think I think we should probably encourage that we put that right on the door i like i wanted it under instead of on yeah. top but yeah i i that that'll that'll working office located in Herschler yeah. east yeah and the intent there is to take what's there now move it up obviously to redo it again and then put it in smaller type of line yeah and that solves the eight and a half by eleven white paper that we all have yes. taped up to our doors exactly <laughs> Um, last one on this list, uh, capital extension. Um, I, I think we're all agreed that that's what we want to call it. But when we wander through the building, um, I've wandered through the building. It, it depends who you talk to. They call it different things, like the connector or the the tunnel or the link or. It used to be a tunnel. Yeah, and, kind of is. But what are we are we affirm that it is the capital extension? Yes. All right. And people will start to call it that more when they actually see the word on, on a sign. And more importantly, none of us could change. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chairman, that'll be an operational issue where we'll probably need to reach out to all the agencies about making sure that's how they notice up meetings. So, so, yeah. so as a follow-up to that, Mr. Chairman and Madam Chair, I did talk with DI, Rachel, and I think she stepped out about creating kind of a user mm -hmm. style. All capital square documents. Okay. Oh, offices, giving them maps. This is how it's named, and it kind of the branding package that gets yeah. sent to everybody in Kirschler, everybody in the capital, and I, everybody. So we're all on the same page. Kind of yeah. That's great. That's Instead of the project that the I know does for stadiums, like a mm -hmm. you're very familiar with that kind of. Yeah. This this is. Uh, this is really important, especially from the from a, a wayfinding point of view and trying to really work as effectively for your audience, people of Wyoming as possible. It's 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 like you gave birth to this place however many years ago, and we're finally having to print the birth certificate, so we've got to give it a name. <laughs> Do we want to change it? Because we're not sure if we like the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. Excellent, excellent. That's that list. <laughs> and that's 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 what we needed to cover today. Great. So thank you ever so much. Appreciate it. Any thank questions you. or comments? Madam Chair, with uh, thanks to DI for that. And we just as a reminder, committee, um, we might be thinking about recommendations we would make in terms of all of the conference rooms. You might remember we envisioned calling them something rather than room one, room three, one, two, five. Uh, we talked about maybe 
geographic regions of Wyoming. We talked about mountain ranges or, or great ages, or uh, but how would we go about naming some of these rooms if we so desire to make that recommendation? All of those yellow marks that yeah. you shared with us a few minutes ago, that's what those are. That's all those rooms, 110 and 113 upstairs uh, on the first floor level. So we have a lot of rooms to think about. On that note, we know, <clears throat> excuse me, we know we have the six rooms and the two public, public meeting rooms in the Capitol. <laughs> excuse me. Are those the only ones we would consider naming? I struggle a little bit with 53 and 54. Um, also because all of the other public ones are very grand and, and formal and they hold public meetings, whereas the others are really important, but they're not, you know, you know they're gonna name that back one Fremont County room or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, so I don't know. That's my thought is do we at least as we as we think about this over the next little bit, uh, is there eight or or do we do we want to name? I'm looking at Wendy and Rihanna. It feels like there's eight, but we do have a couple of conference rooms down here. We do have the auditorium and, you know, that. That's adequate, I would think, the capital oh, sure. auditorium. Yeah. But um, we can make any recommendation on any of the spaces in here. Um, it, it just, it would feel better to me on the Senate floor if you stand up and say, you know, our Judiciary Committee is going to meet tonight at six o'clock and we're going to meet in room one. Wouldn't it sound better if we were going to meet in the Grove Rock room or anyway, mm -hmm. we'll see. But we could we could maybe put that on the agenda for August. And in the meantime, we can all think about that. How we would go about arriving at names if we were going to. And, and Mr. Chairman, you might want to, I'm not sure where it'll end up on DI schedule, but as part of what we've called this large batch five, which is basically everything that's not the floors of the Capitol and everything interactive is that will be part of the exhibit package that DI will be presenting to you about their ideas for what types of photographs they're able to find. And um, that may be the start of the idea of branding of rooms and then how many they can do. You also asked in your last wrong cost exercise for the conference rooms to be added to jazz those up, but whether or not you wanted to name them, I think you could get to when DI comes back to you with some concepts. Yeah. And that's important because I keep wanting to tie that project to wayfinding, but it is not wayfinding. Thank you. Yeah. It'll it'll have a wayfinding element, but luckily yeah. it's graphic, yeah. it's vinyl. Uh, yeah, the wayfinding is never a specific to as to one particular room. It's usually public meeting or conference rooms or that type of thing. So we don't need a need for that purpose. When we start to get into like the digital uh, wayfinding, where people are looking for a very specific room, then it will. And just like when you're saying, that's we're tackling a lot of that in batch five. So, yeah. thank you for putting me bring that up. Thanks, Nigel. Um, yeah. So, I think our biggest biggest thing that we need to think about is what to name the visitor center. And yes. DI will come back with some really rock star options, and then yes. one that clearly enchants us all. Um, with that, we're going to move to Kevin, who has six minutes to. <laughs> <laughs> to present the uh, the Capitol Square artwork and exhibit draft policy update and Capitol curator position description. Oh, well, Madam Chair, I will be uh, brief here. I'm not going to be especially brief on the uh, policy. Uh, we've started drafting that. Um, not really had an opportunity for any internal review. There's quite a a few pieces that still need to come into that. Um, and knowing that it will need, um, even after it's drafted and reviewed eternally, substantial amount of time for review by the subcommittee, um, we would like to just um, sub bring that to the August meeting so that we can spend the time it will really need to, to dive into what those policies need to say and what eventualities we want to address with them. 
So that's the update on the policy. Um, I think that Rihanna was able to print off the, the memo for the curator position. Um, so I think I can just walk through this really quickly. Um, so there's, there's kinds of uh, three main chunks of responsibility that we think this position would be able to oversee within the Capitol. Um, the first and kind of the biggest is, is the really the curation piece of it. So um, this Capitol Gallery, as we're calling it um, now, is uh, you can see there right now, the museum's been programming that. We do the Governor's Capitol Art Exhibition, which is funded um, through contributions from all the agencies that participate in the Capitol program. Uh, that goes up for about six months every two years. Um, and that's really uh, all the museum staff can currently manage in terms of programming that space. Um, so what many of you probably have seen in uh, other times is there might be um, examples from our traveling exhibits program that we can put up for extended periods of time, often up to that 18 months in between GCAE. So, uh, you know, the Sue Ledger drawings were up earlier last year, I guess, um, right before the um, right before the composites moved down to the hallway. Uh, we've had the, the Stimson colored photographs up there as well. Um, but that's really all the resources with our staff and our, our budget that we can do to put art in that space or exhibits in that space. And knowing that the goal and, and the funding that came through during the last session is to have something that's more robust, that's featuring artists working today, featuring work from museums across the state. Uh, we really think there's a need for a position to make sure that we can build those partnerships that can work with those other museums, that can work with artist collectives to bring exhibits to highlight in the Capitol building. Um, and then the second big piece of responsibility for this position um, is maintaining and updating the exhibits that this subcommittee has been working on. Um, you know, I know there's the contemplation with DI for uh, maintenance contracts, but we don't think that would recall, uh, would cover updating content, which is really the, the biggest heavy lift, I think, as we've seen already in the work here, how, how difficult it can be to generate the right content, to get the content reviewed, to have it well-researched. Um, and especially in um, the visitor center or whatever that space becomes called, um, one of the big goals is to have things that can reflect the most contemporary debates, can reflect what's going on now. Um, and that all requires somebody to figure out what that is, to write the content, to get it into the content management system. So that's the second big piece of responsibility that this uh, position would take on. Um, and the third, and this is gonna kind of um, prefigure, I guess, the, the, the policy, but the policy does kind of contemplate some sort of advisory committee, similar to what was set up previously um, to re make recommendations about permanent art in the Capitol, to make recommendations uh, and maybe work to bring in artwork for the chambers, to um, work to establish connections with other museums and other things. Um, and the, the vision for this curator was that they would be the person to staff that committee essentially to be the one who is receiving applications or receiving proposals from the public if they do want to have art in these spaces um, if they do want to have temporary exhibits if there's a place designated for that and other places within the capitol square um well that's kind of the, the three big buckets of responsibility um you can see we did i did look into some other states 17 other states and how they handle this so the capital curator is a really common position um, 82% of those 17 employed at least one person. Um, and some of them, most of them have one full-time person, that's eight. Um, and then it's split evenly, the rest of them between none, one part-time and two or more full-time. Um, and in terms of where the position would live, um, you can see that most of these capitals have a standalone agency that oversees everything about the capital. So they would do visitor services, they would do um, maintenance, um, you know, grounds, restoration. A lot of capitals manage the historic furniture as a specific collection. And so that's part of that. Um, so that's the most common position, but since that doesn't exist at this moment, um, the recommendation that we've had is uh, to, to house it with the State Museum. And you can see some of the, um, the reasoning there, basically because we already hold most 
of the artwork in the building in our collection. There's just some efficiencies. Um, the other piece is that when we're putting up exhibits or, or whatever, um, a lot of the other museum staff are involved in that. So you may have three, three or four museum staff over here installing art. Um, the museum registrar is the one who's currently processing all the paperwork and all the loans for anything that's coming in. So uh, putting the position with the capital or with the museum rather just makes it easier for all of that to happen. Um, you know, if it's housed in another agency, I think the expectation would be that it's that agency that is doing that assistance, that is doing that paperwork processing, that is doing the installation assistance, the maintenance assistance, all the budgeting and stuff like that. So is it good to, yeah. I mean, to, to have any traction in this, we need to know what those 17 states are, their size, and yeah. what kind of just this, Perspective. And I can I can tell you, and I had that initially, and I think I ended up cutting that information. But it's um, primarily Western states: Colorado, Idaho, Kansas, Mississippi, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, and Virginia. So, um, I try to focus mostly on the regional states while pulling in some examples from other areas. Yeah. So just to provide us. That Absolutely. So that will be the first thing to ask. Of course. Thank you. Um, anyway, so that in the memo, there's kind of a little bit more detailed job responsibility breakdown. I think there's probably more really that falls under there, but this was the, the um um the really broad strokes again idea of what the responsibilities of this position would be. Um, responsibilities that aren't really currently. Um, managed by anyone. Um, the museum does some of it, some of it just doesn't happen at all. Um, and uh, and then finally, the, the position classification and, and the cost for what that would be based on the most recent um, market position rates. So, just a little bit over there, but I try to be brief and happy to answer any questions. Kevin, this is super helpful. Um, and I, I know Part of just for situational awareness, I, I think the issue is this committee is in a really good, is in the best position to recognize the need for this position. So we need to figure out how we can best be supportive in a formal way, as opposed to just saying, Parks and Rec, go ask for this position and you carry the water. With, and, and of course, it does have to come through their budget request if that's where we think it should live. but. But what action can we need take, or do we, should we take today to be to be supportive and get the ball rolling? Whoever, either Kevin or so, Andy or, Madam Co-Chairman, I think that's the hinge point, really. I um, I appreciate your work, Kevin. Thank you, and it, and I would underline what the Co-Chairman just said. This, this is not yours to carry the water for. We ask you for your help. You provided it to the subcommittee. And um, it, it's my feeling that perhaps we would forward, absent an objection, we could forward a recommendation that would go up through the legislative branch and, and to the governor's office to, uh, to share this recommendation uh, supported by the information that Kevin has pulled together. Um, and, and I'm looking over at, at our chairman of the Appropriations Committee. It seems to me that would be the most appropriate, uh, Mr. Chairman, to to at least forward that official communication from the subcommittee on up. What do you think? I would say yes. I, I, I think it's probably a little premature because we've got to get all of our work done. And, and, and as the workload continues to grow, we'll have greater justification for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're just in the process of circling the wagons and thinking about it. And we'll have to, I can sit down. I think we need to flesh this out a little bit more, and, and particularly in terms of time constraints and what, how much time you, your office currently spends doing what they do. We kind of have a breakdown of that. Um, just, we'll just kind of grind it down a little further. Madam Chairman, I think that the only urgency that I feel is that if, if the governor was so inclined to include it in a budget, that's got to happen fairly soon. 
and uh, I'm not saying that it's 100% ready to go necessarily, but it probably wouldn't be a bad thing to get on the radar screen. Um, and we have someone in the governor's office here. I just sure. wanted to confirm, I'm assuming the position in your straw man is this position. Okay. That's good. And Mr. Co-Chair, I, I, I agree. And I think that the uh, good appropriations chair will be very helpful by poking holes in this to make it ultimately be more successful. Um, but I do think, I mean, a budget request this year, we don't, they can't even, they can't even put the post out for another year. And by then we, I hope we, we have, we have at that point, um, waiting till the next budget is going to be awfully late. And then to me, it gets a little harder to justify because then there's the, well, we sort of been getting by without it so we can muddle, muddle through and right when all the content needs to be updated. And I really think my, my, my knee jerk reaction is that the needs are really, really accurate. To me, it's that second one that's really, really a highlight because there is a massive change here. And, and I know, I know that, um, the state museum is 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 just trying to keep art in there when they can by the skin of their teeth. But I think there will be a look at this to say, oh, well, they're already doing a good job because you guys do an amazing job with what you have, right? Mm -hmm. So to I, I would almost I would almost maybe really we are adding we are going from nothing to to full speed ahead and that content update and management and even the. Well, somebody stole the judicial branch wheel again. <laughs> you know who's who's dealing with that, and and that could be really important. It, I, just from the governor's perspective, just through this, you would love for this to reflect all of Wyoming, and and not just Cheyenne. And um, I think to do that, you you have to have resources to get that done. It just doesn't magically appear. Um, but I think that's an important element to the governor is that we are reflecting all the people of Wyoming. And so I think that would just, he would just want to make sure that that is a goal of his position and project. I mean, absolutely. I think that's, that's one of the main things in thinking about a position that can be doing that type of work, that can be going out. I mean, that's why I kind of think that first one is is the most pressing because the amount of work it takes to build those connections across the state to get the stakeholders on board from every corner to say, yeah, we're going to lend our artifacts to the Capitol building. It's not a, that's not a small lift at all. And, and that's why get it. I don't think the logistics of it yeah. have to be quite complex, I would think. Yeah, that, yeah that, we were, that's one reason we were so happy when, when Barry Bryant brought this exhibit that's currently up in because it is very representative of that portion of the state. But that was a grant funded project that stipulated that at the end, the grant be donated to the to the state museum. That's the only reason that could happen. If if there was a project like that that was not funded already through the Arts Council, I don't think there's any way we could put it up. I, just, I can't say if he'd support it or not, but I, I do know that he's mentioned that to him that's an important element of what we reflect here. Well, you know, Madam Chairman, that and really appreciate those comments. I I think um I think it certainly does no harm to inform our chairman of the appropriations committee, uh, other leadership positions in the legislature, along with the governor, just is to say, look, we, we've run across this. We're very much aware of what it's going to take if, if we, because of all the work we've done. And um, and it either goes up or it goes down. It's supported or it's not. There's always good reasons for both. Um, but I, I, I like the fact, Madam Chairman, that we would at least get it on the radar. I really do. And so, as I said, absent any objection it's it feels like we need to forward some kind of formal memo to both of those entities i would agree does that does that sound okay to everyone involved here yes and i'd like to suggest that we use the phrase statewide outreach 
and coordination in that memo. Yeah. Well, there's there's some amazing museums out there, and I, I'd love to see pieces from all over. Um, but, <clears throat> so, Madam Chairman, maybe we can work on that. Yep. And I wonder, we'll too, that, so. if we can. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And again, the next budget session will be, you know, I don't think we, this is it's not an emergency. We see this need coming. Probably shouldn't be a supplemental request. Um, but again, knowing we don't, we it's fair to say we don't need this person in place this month. All right. So one, one other thought, Madam Chair, real quickly, uh, appreciate the ongoing effort, uh, Kevin, with respect to the uh, the draft policy. And I, I think uh, pointing toward August for a first look at something uh, in the back of my mind sometime in the fall, it, it would be great if we could work our way through that and make the recommendation or provide that back to the SBC. That was the governor's request. And so you're on time with that. And I think I think that's kind of how it's going to lay out. So okay. Um moving on, let's go to Will for the design build contract recommendation. Thanks, Madam Co Chair. Um, so basically we are, as you raised, we're getting pretty close to um wrapping up SD, uh, specifically on the way funding, although after today, I think there's still a little bit more to be done, but uh, um, we are still getting pretty close, and I think the exhibits are going to trail a little bit behind, um, but uh, we would like um, a recommendation to uh, move forward um, to get DI under contract uh, for design development and actually a design build on the exhibit side, and to produce uh, construction documents or bidding documents on the wayfinding side and go out to bid on that piece of work or that part of the work. Um, the reason for that, breaking those two up is um, talking to DI, working with them. Um, they felt that there was some cost savings on the wayfinding side. A lot of the tool bronze signs and things like that, they would have to outsource anyway. Um, and this would also give local companies an opportunity as well to go after that work. Um, so we would still have them under contract again to provide bidding documents and also construction administration. So they would still do shop drawing reviews and things like that and, um, and site visits and things. So making sure things are being installed properly and everything. Um, but then on the exhibit side, we would go complete design build with them and they would do the fabrication and everything on that side. Um, so I guess, um, I'm looking for, I guess, a, a recommendation from subcommittee to uh, be able to move forward. So, <clears throat> not sure I understand. See, my thought is that if you have the general understanding of what um, CMD wants to do, that we might want to have an executive session of the, of the actual members and sit down and run through the, the hard dollars and, and, and tie all this in the boat before we. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and so I do have a proposal. Are you ready from, to have a meeting? Yeah. That? What's that? I'm sorry. Are you ready to have such a meeting? Uh, yeah. You... Yeah, we have um, the proposal from from DI. Okay, yeah. Um, now, I guess on the construction side, uh, we'll have to work with DI. That you guys are still kind of putting together your wrong costs and what that maximum. Um, Price is going to be on is that there side. A due date for them? So right now we are working towards it. Um, as, as we've been on site, the August meeting seems a little soon, just to make sure that we're capturing all of the the changes and additions. So we are tentatively working towards the September subcommittee meeting to represent that. Uh, it'll be very similar to <coughs> to what you've submitted. At. Sorry for wayfinding or for uh, for for all in from our Oh, okay, for all in. And certainly be flexible about that too. If we need to bounce it up, try to work on it for August. Sure. Um, in some regards, I mean, our, our we have a budget all in. 
um, you know, their proposal for design um, fabrication drawings. Um, and that kind of, I guess, gets us to where our maximum price is for the work. Do you need approval today on any of those items to not slow things down? Well, that, that's kind of, well, I mean, I guess that's a little bit on DI's side, but we don't want to, the wayfinding piece specifically to lag. That's um, now we do have another option. I mean, we could just go under contract just on the wayfinding piece for the design and the construction documents. Um, and so that would not slow that up. And then we could do the design build on the exhibit side along. That is an option. Mm -hmm. Well, so tell us about this done. So right now, when do we run out of current contract under the wayfinding? Wayfinding is not scheduled in front of me. It's supposed to wrap up here. Yeah. After this this wonderful walkthrough that we've done today, we've gotten some wonderful direction. Um, we will be including those changes. Um, however, after that review of that next round of wayfinding, we should be fairly close and ready to at least start the big documentation completion process. We can get those out to bid as quickly as possible to hopefully provide them from a fabrication perspective, whoever that successful bidder is, as quickly as possible. And that's strictly on the wayfinding. Right. So task-wise, we run out of contract right before we go to the bid documentation. Correct. Okay. Go ahead, Wendy. And, and I think I'd further add, so the wayfinding is kind of one scope package and that's going to be procured a little bit differently, but even within the design build, we are working with DI to try to separate out what we're calling the static exhibits, which would be the basically the capital exhibits, um, grounds, garden through third, because we think those are close and we can accelerate those. And then all of the interactive pieces and visitor center will take longer. So what we don't want to do is have it so that SD for everything, visitor center, which is still a really heavy lift, um, constitution, um, the interactive building timeline, some of those things are going to lag further. So there's also um, a desire for the ability to move ahead on some of those things so that you can have deliveries of items come in in a staggered schedule rather than waiting for all of SD to be done, all of DD to be done, all of fabrication to be done. So that um, fits into it too. So I don't know if it also works um, just for this subcommittee to give not an actual approval to enter into contracts, but that um, CMD, it, they as the contracting and fiscal agent while they have that authority they've always come to you every time they've had a change order so it would be the same concept here of in principle yes we want to find ways to continue to work through these processes and these would be the procurement vehicles we'll, we're looking at but as they're working through it they would come back to you as a subcommittee so it sounds like a wayfinding the wayfinding is sort of the most on fire right now this well Again, we don't want to need the project to lag. And if there is a, an opportunity for DI to speed up on some of the more static exhibits, you know, we'd like to go under contract as soon as possible on that side as well. Do we have dollar amounts or a budget schedule? I don't have mine in front of me. Um, I can get the complete budget. Um, the, uh, for the DD phase, um, on the design, we're looking at 560,000. <laughs> and that would include the wayfinding, bid documents, and um, the exhibit. We believe a small segment of engineering so that we can move some of the additional elements forward from an engineering perspective. Yeah, correct. So, uh, co chairs, I, I would go back to my original comment. What we need is a presentation on all this. I think even for the committee to make a rational recommendation would they go into details and if we don't do um, in a public meeting yeah. um, and then combine that um, then you know as with as much as we have on the on the rock mm -hmm. and because I don't know how we have to but the whole idea 
is essentially to keep moving forward and, and not slow down the process because in you know, its essence, we're almost about a year behind our Right. And, and the more we do without some return of visible return of the dollar, the harder it's going to be to get anything done. So. Yeah. yeah, we can try together. So we can communicate on that and uh, with co chairs and uh, with Wendy and the governors do we kind of sometime in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so anything else on that or anything we're missing or action we need to take today? And I think we're all somewhat familiar with the concept that, and I'll put this bluntly, DI could make the signs if they had to, but this is not your favorite lane to be in. And we all sort of recognize that putting the, the fabrication out to bid maybe helps the timeline overall and, and also gives um, some Wyoming teams to have the opportunity to, to bid on that. So, Madam Chairman, I think maybe we can put our heads together in the coming days here soon and, and try to uh, have even a Zoom meeting and, and include our committee members and um, probably not necessary to include all of, of our members, ex officio, et cetera, but we'll just need to make a decision, which we will do and try to expedite and move things forward. So. Appreciate it, uh, Will, you inform me, and we'll certainly include you so that we can be more precise about exactly what we might want to break down and move forward. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that, knowing we're sort of butting up against our time, but actually doing fairly well, given our, our task list today, I would move to public comment. Does anyone have public comment? I just have a question. Absolutely. Um, what, what is the status of just even external wayfinding uh, building directory or whatever for the Herschler building? That's I'm, I'm just, where are we? Thank you. Great, great question, um, Marguerite. That's that's actually uh, in the in the timeline, which someone mentioned, you know, we know has has slipped a little bit from our original plan, mainly for good reason, I think, in just the enormity of the task. We have sort of separated the project into chunks and are moving wayfinding first, knowing the need is dire. And so what you probably have noticed today is these signs stuck up everywhere. Um, that is, you know, we have gone through several processes already where we've all reviewed what they're supposed to look like. Now, this is the step where we physically have them up and we are walking around and saying, oops, let's change that verbiage. Oops, let's, um, including on the grounds. So that was one of our, um, one of our most in need of wayfinding areas that, that, that's, but that Herschler building area. So I'm so glad you said that. Um, that, and that's also what we're discussing about we'll, we'll move forward with DI to create those bid documents after they capture all of our commentary from today and over the next couple of weeks. And then that would go out to bid for fabrication. Originally, our goal was to have wayfinding done by the end of this year. I think that will be very tight. Is that, and please correct me if I'm wrong. But that's our goal. So hopefully, if not, then relatively soon thereafter. Could, could just follow up a couple of questions. So what would you envision um, something more textual or something more of like a graphic? Here's a layout of, of Herschler East and and here's what's in it and here's where you find it. Which one is that, do you think, or is it going to be a... When, yeah. and let, let me just say, when you approach Herschler, it's like, which door is it? It's a gamble. And so it would be nice to have some hints about where to start anyway. Oh, so that, that's gonna be interpretive on the outside. And then, because the poor public has no 
idea where to start. And I and the only other thing I would just mention, there was some discussion about replacing some of the the rooms. Um, I, I assume you meant like the, the committee rooms with names. And I would say the numbers are so descriptive and that people don't have to know which is the Teton room. You know, three west and, and everybody knows exactly where it is. And so I would I would urge you that if you want to do the naming for whatever you know, artistic reason there might be, um, leave the number. And because that is so unambiguous and so clear and so easy. And so I would just, I, I would say the naming is a little, is sort of an extra thrill. It's, it's fun to do, but um, the numbers are, are the most um, clear and unambiguous and give the public direction these as well. And, and that's absolutely our intent. Super helpful, and I should have had you identify yourself, Marguerite Herman, one of our our best committee attendees and longtime school board member. So she knows what she's well, talking about. And legal women voters, and um, so um, and the the wayfinding, and just just for your information, the the capital wayfinding is going to be very robust. You might come back and say, "Wow, that's a few too many signs." <laughs> with progressive disclosure, as you may or may not have heard them talk about, you know, we have what, what we call the mall directories where we have maps of everything. And then as you get closer, um, you know, we have more specific signage to which building is which. The Herschler buildings will actually have large gold lettering on all entrances, identifying them, and then vinyl lettering on the glass saying what's in there. And again, this is hopefully after you've already hit the, the mall directory to know sort of where you're heading. So we're, I, I, like I said, I'm so glad you're here to, to, as a member of the public saying, wow, this is a real mess because we- And, and, and a user, a, a, a yeah. practitioner and user of the facility. Yes. So yes. thank you. And, and, and can we tell people it will be in place by- Mid 2024, would that be? Which century is this? <laughs> I, please correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like mid 2024 feels safe for wayfinding. The 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 next summer. The bells and whistles and exhibits. I that that oh, may not yes. happen, but wayfinding. Yes, I feel like that feels safe. And just now, we'll just add another unsolicited comment that. Um, the hiring of someone dedicated, this is their job, is to pick up all the pieces and do it, take care of it um, for all the reasons we discussed, yeah. is a great idea. It's the way to make sure it's gonna be done correct, right. And so I, it sounds like a good idea to me. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, hearing none. Before we talk about uh, next meeting dates, anything else we've missed today? Any other business we need to cover? So, um, just now to inform you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, um, one of your going to receive the files page is Ian is working aggressively and dutifully updating um, all of the signs. And what you can anticipate to see uploaded is the PDF version. Um, and it'll say approved as noted. With a big disclaimer, it will have your edits from today's walk or approved or approved of changes or some variety of language, but do not anticipate he doesn't have time to actually update the mock up of the signs. So that's going to be uploaded in file stage. The signs will remain for a week. Once he has time, it'll be uploaded to file stage. We'll send a note out. You're encouraged to walk around the space. Um, but that updated pre like PDF deck is kind of going to be your guide to what we did today to be reflective of the changes. So that will be next steps for reviewing in file stage. In addition to that wayfinding style directory was is in is it will be in style file stage. So you can kind of spend some time reviewing that at greater length. Um, so that's the review portion of the meeting. Um, and what's the deadline on that? Or did you just say? Great. I don't know. What is the deadline? From our perspective, we we will have it up by Monday. By Monday first. Yeah. The beginning right. of the day. So. And when will you need it back? Um, this a week or two weeks. So acceptable. Two. <laughs> two weeks. There's a lot of signage. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of signage yeah. and it's from Frontier Day. And a lot of it. Oh, okay. It's related to that. 
can we will follow up with with Wendy and Rihanna. We'll we'll come up with a workable. Even day. ten days would be better than seven. Madam Chairman, just just a quick thought to those who did not walk all day. Um, this is this is from first stage up to a second stage, so that so that when you get it in file stage from Ian, uh, just because it says it that that sign is essentially done, if you catch something on something, by all means, this is it's still as a subcommittee we have the ability to get messages back. So. Let's take a good look and make sure that we feel good about the signage. If you have time to, to walk the building and take a look at some of this, um, you have to understand that some of those signs are going to be a little bigger than what they're shown. Just to put it there. But anyway, just wanted to throw that out. So, and make and make sure or maybe tell tell your directors that they maybe let staff know what the signs are there for and that feedback is welcome. Feedback is not welcome in for in the form of writing on the signs what you should yeah. be there. That will not be reviewed and is not helpful. Um scar up the walls. Too. Yes, that too. When also Wendy will yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> so there was there an email, what I thought was a sharpie earlier. <laughs> there was an email that went out, but that maybe only went to like directors. So so this is not a secret process. Um Feel free to share with with staff and your entire agency. Uh, and I might put on my list to. I'm really, I'm I'm really having heartburn over Herschler West since we just don't we don't have anybody on this committee that that occupies that building, right? So that's just an area that none of us are familiar with. So we can't say, oh well, that doesn't make sense. So. So I may specifically reach out to see those folks. Uh, if I may ask, DI, uh, on these slides, because I haven't seen them yet, do they have the sizes? And I mean, that was one of the questions I, and, and Rob, I know you said notice was not walked around. It's just hard to picture, like, yeah. from that piece of paper. <laughs> Many of them do. Um, I will say some of them are changing based off of our discussions today. But generally speaking, they are small. Um, and then if are we are we keeping these mock-ups oh, so okay. we can keep them in the room so you guys are welcome to look at it. it has an identifier of which sign type it is and there is one sample of every sign type size and that's what these pieces are out here just as one more note there are some places throughout the building where a sign might be located to the side of a doorway that actually goes above or in an area that we cannot reach without a ladder or something like that. So um, that will be in the document correctly, but it may be to the left of a door when it actually goes above it. A few items like that, just, so, just to be clear. And as we said, the scale is not correct for the signs throughout. So it's more about them saying the right thing. So go. Uh, just one more, one more kind of big timeline question. Okay, so we go out and review this version. We pass it back to DI. DI makes all the changes. And then I'm, do we have a final review? Or then at that point, when, when, what, is, what does the next three months look like for wayfinding in terms of who's doing what? Until we get to that, put it out for, everything's perfect, we're putting it out for bid. Yeah, I wanted to remain if we do another walkthrough, maybe not with mock-ups, but with a walkthrough, um, or if that will be happening electronically. Okay. So yeah, we'll determine if you we get 10 days, two weeks, what that feedback looks like, how long we'll need to turn that back around and get you a schedule for that. But we would like to have one more review and feel like that would probably be a pretty good final review before we go into final and and that would be the SD package that this group was yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Madam Chairman, I would just tell Marguerite that I'm really excited about the progress. And I, I think everyone's going to be pretty pleased. Um, it's it's going to be really, really helpful. Long time in coming, but um, I think Herschler especially needs the help, I think so. I think you'll uh, find good work being done. 
Well, and, and let me just say that's not the thing you suggested, uh, is that um, I appreciate the extent to which you are uh, focusing on making the building understandable to the public, not just the people who work here or whatever, uh, understanding that um, it's, you know, it's state government, which serves the people. And, and the extent to which I pointed out the Herschler thing is because, I mean, it's, um, you can find yourself lost in the maze and, and then you forget if you're in the, in the east or the west. And so, the, and Secretary of State, well, the business is over in the east, but the west is the elections. And it's just, it, it becomes um, real frustrating. And so th I appreciate the extent to which you're putting the public, what do they see? What do they need? When do they need it? That sort of thing. So thank you. You'd almost think we did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to wait, find the Herschler building is a little bit like putting lipstick on a pig, but the, the pig is going to look very, very nice. <laughs> and, uh, and we love the building. It's beautiful, but it is, it is, it is such a confusing building. Way as as Di says, way wayfinding can only fix so many ills. But we are we are. I think we will do the best we can do. Yeah, thanks. It was very constructive. Still doing all they can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, with that, next next meeting dates August. These are and these are fairly locked in, are they not? Mm -hmm. Um, August 23rd, September 26th, October 19th, November 29th, January 5th. Madam Chairman, subcommittee, do everything we can to respond to our friends at DI. The, the better we do, the better they can do in return. And um, like I said, we're we're making good progress now and it's pretty exciting. So and I think this is really, really a stage where all, all everybody really needs to be going into these wayfinding reviews and com commenting uh, again, particularly like DED, where your floor is, nobody else has any idea. So you have to go in and look um, and really pick through those signs because the rest of us don't live there. And if your sign ends, ends up wrong, I take it. <laughs> That's the warning. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we'll be looking for is the file stage room. All right. Thank you. 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 Th